What's up guys, we are getting ready to start a Robot Master Weapons only run of Mega Man 4 for the NES. The rules are quite simple, I'm never allowed to use the Mega Buster except on the very first Robot Master that I fight. I'm not allowed to use the Mega Buster at all throughout his stage, just on the very first Robot Master that I fight. I also can't use Rush, the Wire Adapter, or the Balloon Adapter. Uh, there will be some areas that will force you to use Rush, I'm not allowed to use the Mega Buster at all while using Rush. Same thing with Bright Man's weapon, the Flash Stopper. I can only use the time stopping effects of it. I can't use the Mega Buster after freezing time. That goes against the rules. You only have two choices for your first Robot Master Pharaoh Man and Drill Man. All the other Robot Masters are forbidden first choices. Pharaoh Man's stage is easier to go through without your Mega Buster, and he gives you the better weapon. So, yeah, that's why I chose him. Ringman stage has four mini bosses, which force you to use your Mega Buster. Dive Man stage has the two whale mini bosses, which force Mega Buster use. While it is possible to go all the way through Skull Man stage without using your Mega Buster, the fact is it can only kill two bosses completely using only Skull Barrier, Bright Man, and Dive Man. And the fact is that in Dive Man stage, the whale mini bosses take every last shot of Skull Barrier to destroy. So that leaves you nothing to fight off Dive Man with. And the only other Robot Master that you can take out using only the Skull Barrier is Bright Man. And like I said, you can't use the Mega Buster with the Flash Stopper, therefore you can't kill a single Robot Master using his weapon. So Skull Man is a forbidden first choice, and like I just said, you can't kill a single Robot Master using Bright Man's weapon, so that also makes him a forbidden first choice. Dust Man stage has those trash compactors which force you to use your Mega Buster to destroy those clumps of garbage. So he's a forbidden first choice. And Toad Man has those snail mini bosses, so he's a forbidden first choice. And that just leaves us with Pharaoh Man and Drill Man. Which, uh, like I said, I'd recommend going to Pharaoh Man first because he has the easier stage to do without your Mega Buster and he gives a better weapon. I always really liked Pharaoh Man, like, as an overall package, as a robot master, his stage, his music, everything. Uh, it has the balloon adapter hidden in it, it has really great music, I like the Egyptian pyramid theme. He puts up a really fun fight, and he gives you a really great weapon, so overall I think Pharaoh Man is a really great robot master overall. I don't believe that there's a way to 100% exploit his AI, but I do think that the closer you are to him, the more likely that he will charge up his Pharaoh shot, which is easier to dodge than him jumping around shooting the smaller blasts at you. So I'd recommend just staying close by, that way he'll charge more often. Then he seems easier to dodge if you stay pretty close to him. You can slide under him if he jumps and everything. But overall, I think the Pharaoh Man puts up a pretty fun fight. For defeating Pharaoh Man, you get the Pharaoh Shot, which is a really great chargeable weapon. You can shoot it in every direction except for straight up and straight down. Uh, whenever you charge it, it makes a giant fireball appear above Mega Man's head, which you can just use that to destroy enemies without using any weapon energy. If an enemy hits the fireball that's above your head and you keep a hold of the charge button, you can uh, get lined up, release the button, and you can shoot a, another charge shot right away. So you can get two charged shots off at once like that. That makes it really good for boss battles alone, because you can take off six bars of their health really quickly like that. Overall, Pharaoh Shot is one of the best weapons in the entire Classic series. Definitely one of my favorite. It's also really good on weapon energy. Here we are in Bright Man stage. He always had a really fun stage in my opinion. I like the whole idea of the lights constantly being turned on and off by the enemies that you destroy. I never really quite understood the totem poles and, and the grasshoppers and everything, but eh, whatever, I guess. I really do like Bright Man's music as well, and I like the little light bulb type things. I'm not sure what they are, the little things that you see on the ceiling and floor here and there. Look like they have the little wavy lines in them and stuff, I like that. Let's take a hit and climb up the ladder here. Overall, I do like Bright Man's stage a lot. It has an alternate path if you want to go it. You can't take the alternate path if you're doing a Robot Master Weapons only run because it forces you to use Rush to get back. If you're just doing a normal run though, then you can take it if you want. It's coming right up. Just take the ladder down right here to be at the alternate path. It leads to a dead end that has an energy tank and a 1-up. While I really like Mega Man 4's Robot Master set, I think that they chose some pretty weird stuff to design their Robot Masters after. 
You got rings, submarines, light bulbs, vacuum cleaners, drills, toads. Really weird stuff to design them after, but hey, it works, I guess. Brightman himself always kind of looked a little bit chubby to me, like he has chubby cheeks or something. He doesn't look that bad, just a little bit chubby. And here we are at the final stretch of his stage. I always found it kind of weird that if you're charging up arrow shot and you are standing on one of these type of platforms and you move forward, the charge shot from Pharaoh shot will just stay in place so you can really leave it behind. Kind of weird that it does that, but eh, whatever, I guess. You can also make it uh, get out of place with Mega Man if you keep sliding back and forth. It won't be above him anymore, it'll just be trailing behind him. The trick to Bright Man is to hit him with one normal shot and then use nothing but charged shots from then on. Doing that will cause him to never use his flash stopper on you. The reason for that is he only uses it at certain points in his health. He'll use it whenever he has 16 health left, 8 health left, and 4 health left. So hitting him with one normal shot and then nothing but charged shots from there will cause him to always be at an odd number. Therefore, he won't never use his flash stopper on you. I thought that that was a pretty neat way of uh, hiding how he uses it. I remember a lot of people thought that it was just kind of random whenever he'd use it for the longest of time. For defeating Bright Man, you get the Flash Stopper weapon, which lets you freeze time for a little while. After you've frozen time, you can shoot down enemies with your Mega Buster, which we can't do in this run, but we can still use its time-stopping effects. You can extend the amount of time that enemies are frozen by sliding, which is really neat. It's got pretty decent energy for what kind of a weapon it is. It only uses four bars of energy per use. So yeah, overall, Flash Stopper is a really great weapon. Even though we're not allowed to use the Mega Buster with it, it'll still see a lot of use throughout this run. As a matter of fact, I think I'll use it throughout the first part of this stage. We don't really need to kill any of the enemies. Flash Stopper does just fine holding them in place. I always thought that Ringman had kind of a weird stage, or at least some weird stuff. Like these uh, rainbow platforms, the snake platforms later. Hippos on a platter for a mini boss. Just kind of some weird stuff. <laughs> Some of the stuff makes sense, though, like the little slinky mini-bosses. But other things, like the hippo on a platter mini-boss, is just kind of weird. Just gonna use the pharaoh shot on the hippo on a platter, just hit him with a charge shot like that, use the next uh, blast to take out his missiles and hit him, and then just destroy him. Pharaoh shot is really great for mini-bosses. We'll keep using a uh, flash stopper. I'm gonna try to save as much of a pharaoh shot as I can for a ring man. That is Ringman's weakness, actually. We have another mini boss here, one of the little slinky type enemies. One fully charged blast of arrow shot will destroy them. And directly after him, we have another hippo on a platter. We got a visit from Eddie in this stage, but we can't actually go see him because otherwise that would force us to use Rush, so we have to skip over visiting Eddie. Oh well, though. Despite the rainbow and snake platforms being kind of weird, I do think that they add some pretty uh, fun platforming elements to Mega Man 4. The snake platforms go in the opposite direction as the rainbow platforms earlier, so you have to run along them and then jump. Whereas with the rainbow platforms, you just had to outrun them. We're just about to the end of this section here. I like the little planets that you can see in the background and the stars and everything. Got another slinky mini boss here. Just charge up Pharaoh shot from the ladder and shoot it down into the right. There we go. And coming right up is Ringman. Ringman was always a weird design choice to me whenever I was younger. It turns out that he was strictly designed to be a combat robot to fight against Mega Man. Still, though, rings for a combat design? Kind of weird, but uh, hey. Even though Ringman is really predictable, I think that he's a lot of fun to fight. He may be really predictable, but he's really fast, and uh, you're always jumping and trying to move to dodge his ring boomerang. So, yeah, he puts up a really fun fight, even though he's pretty predictable. For defeating Ringman, we get the ring boomerang, which is a shield-piercing, multiple-hitting projectile. Very useful. And on top of that, it only uses one bar of energy per shot, so yeah. Overall, it's a really good weapon. I always like the little weapon gets screen here, how it's all kind of 3D for an NES game. It's pretty cool, I think. I also like the way how the Robot Master selected screen looks with the little two colors moving everywhere. 
I always thought that that looked pretty cool. Dustman was another odd design choice for me. Vacuum cleaners? But, eh, whatever. We'll just freeze time throughout this area. Give uh, Flash Stopper some more use. I want to try to save as much of uh, Ring Boomerang as I can because we'll need it later to destroy some of the trash in the trash compactors. So I'll definitely be saving it for then. This next area throughout here is uh, pretty neat. It's got these blocks that come up to form platforms for you. Which is, uh, interesting. Just use Farishot to take out the little red creatures, destroys them in one hit. We have a visit from Eddie coming up here pretty shortly. The music in this stage isn't really my favorite. It's kind of depressing sounding if you're just listening to the music alone without playing the game. I really like the way a Dustman stage looks, especially at the beginning. I like the background and the way how everything looks. And at the end of the stage, I like how all the trash is on fire and everything. And this is another neat little element added to Mega Man 4, the trash compactors. I mean, I don't think that they're super amazing or anything, but still kind of neat, I suppose. Just use Ring Boomerang to remove all the trash. It does the best job of removing it all, in my opinion. Assuming you're not using the Mega Buster, of course. You'll want to try to save some of Ring Boomerang for the fight against Dustman because that's his weakness. And there we go. Done with the trash compactor. Those enemies always reminded me of bubblegum machines. This mech coming up right here on this screen kind of confuses me. I don't understand why he has to twirl around. On top of that, I don't really understand why he has to take more hits. Maybe he's spinning so fast that the shots are barely hurting him. Here we are at Dustman. Dustman is weak to the Ring Boomerang. If you don't have any Ring Boomerang, try to use Pharaoh Shot, assuming that you have some energy in it. And here we go. Dustman's one of the easier robot masters in Mega Man 4. He only really has two attacks. He can try to suck you in, which if he tries to do that, just walk away from him. Other than that, he can try to hack up a Dustman Furball onto you. If he does that, just time it right and jump straight up in the air and you'll avoid his attack. Pretty easy. For defeating Dustman, you get the Dust Crusher weapon, which is a really good weapon. I think that it's pretty underrated myself. When you shoot it, it will fire a block of junk, which will split into four directions once it hits an enemy. And all the shots will go diagonally, up left, up right, down left, and down right. And uh, the resulting shots that split into the four directions can also hit the enemy resulting in multiple hits from one shot. So overall, it, re it is a really good weapon. It's pretty powerful. On top of that, it only uses up one bar of energy per shot. So yeah, overall, it's a really good weapon. Here we are on Skull Man stage. I really like Skull Man stage. He has really good music, and I like the way how it looks. It looks like we're up in the sky or something. I wonder how high he built up all these bones and everything. I like how later on the stage, it, the time of day changes. Looks like it's uh, getting the sun down. The only way to defeat the Skeleton Joes completely is to hit them with the fully charged shot of Pharaoh shot. His stage is also a really good one to farm up uh, energy tanks on because you can potentially get three of them in this stage. Assuming that uh, Eddie gives you an energy tank, or you just keep going up and down at his little area until he gives you one. Other than that, there are two other energy tanks laying around in his stage, so if you end up needing any energy tanks, this is the stage to come to. There's one energy tank over to the right from here. Then there's another one that you'll see right up here. I'll use Ring Boomerang a little bit. Shoot through the back of this skull mat. Even though they're called skull mats, I don't think that they really look like mats at all. Kind of weird. We don't have much left to Skullman stage. We're getting ready to come up to the area where the time of day changes. Amazing how through one screen transition, the time of day changes from being early to like sundown. We don't have much further to go before we're Skullman himself. Skullman's just a really cool design, I think. He puts up a really fun battle as well. I think that he has a good, uh balance of offense and defense with his Skull Barrier and his Buster. So yeah, overall, I really do like Skull Man a lot. I think that he's really cool. He puts up a fun fight. He has a good stage and good music. I like how it looks like there's the skeleton of a dinosaur in the background of his room. I think that that's really cool. 
Skull Man goes down really quickly to the Dust Crusher. He doesn't put up hardly any fight at all if you use that. As you can see, he's already dead. For defeating Skull Man, you get the Skull Barrier weapon. The Skull Barrier puts up a shield of skulls around Mega Man, which protects him from collision and from certain enemy shots. Which, uh, just your basic shield, really. You can't really shoot it off or anything. May not sound that useful, but actually it has several areas where it's a really good weapon to use. So for this game in particular, Skull Barrier is a really good weapon. Next up, I think we'll take out Toad Man. I really like Toad Man's music. He has one of my favorite songs in the entire classic series. I also really like his stage. I like how something's always either pushing with you or against you throughout his stage. Like right here at the beginning, you had the rain and wind pushing against you. But eventually you'll go into the sewers where you'll be running through water that will sometimes push against your back and sometimes push against you, making you slower. And uh, in the sewers, it's also kind of interesting that they hid some power-ups within the water and the waterfalls and everything. Skull Barrier makes a great weapon choice throughout here. It destroys every single enemy in just one hit. So yeah, you can literally just run right through everything. No threat whatsoever. The only thing that you have to switch out a Skull Barrier for for the rest of the entire level is to fight the Snail Mini-Boss. I'll use Dust Crusher on the Snail Mini-Boss. Probably not the most effective weapon, but uh, I wanted to have a little bit of screen time, so we'll go ahead and use it. Shouldn't take that many shots to destroy the snail mini boss. Just avoid the bombs that it shoots, it'll occasionally shoot its eyes like that. So just avoid all that, and there won't be any problems. Hmm. I think that we'll just stick to using Dust Crusher for the next mini boss. After we've destroyed this snail, we'll be at the final stretch of the stage. Skull Barrier makes a good weapon for that area, because once again it can destroy all the enemies throughout there with just one hit. Throughout this area, we'll be going across a little shallow area with water. Just stay along the platforms, use Skull Barrier to destroy the fish, and you don't have any threats to worry about. And we are now at Toad Man. Toadman's weakness is the drill bomb, which we don't have, so instead we'll use the Pharaoh shot. He's widely known as being one of, if not the easiest robot master in the entire classic series, and he definitely is one of the easiest. All you really have to do is charge up a charge shot, shoot it at him, charge up a charge shot, shoot it at him, charge up, so on and so forth. His only real attack is the rain flush, which he can't get off unless he completes his hula dance. And so long as you keep hitting him, he'll never complete that hula dance. Poor Toad, man. I really do like him. I think that he's pretty cool. He's just really easy, that's all. For defeating Toad, man, you get the Rain Flush weapon, which is a really useful attack all weapon that hits all enemies on the screen. Whenever you shoot it, it fires a missile into the air, which then a moment later, Acid Rain comes pouring down. It's also a weapon that ignores the defenses of enemies, so you can kill Mets while they're still inside of their hard hats. And, uh, like, you can hurt Dustman while he's trying to suck you in. You can destroy Skull Man's Skull Barrier with it. You can hurt Drill Man while he's underground with it. Stuff like that. Overall, it is a really good, uh, attack all weapon. Here we are in Drill Man's stage. This stage is pretty cool. I really like the music and everything. I'm not really sure what to think of, like, the way how it looks or anything. It looks alright, doesn't look bad or anything. Eventually, you'll come up to an area with, uh, spikes here and there. Some of the spikes really aren't threatening at all. Later on in the stage, it gets kind of weird, though, because you'll be flipping switches that apparently make Earth. Kind of weird. You'll see it whenever we get to it, though. Again, it's kind of a neat, uh, little stage element here in Mega Man 4. Seen some uh, rain flush use throughout here, destroying the bubble bats before they even come out. We'll save the rest of it for later in the stage. Throughout this next area, Skull Barrier does really good. Kills all the enemies in one hit. You can't hit the spikes above me unless you, like, bring out Rush and kill yourself. Other than that, you can jump as high as you want. We'll use rain flush again right here, destroys all these enemies. Don't have to wait for them. And just keep on moving. 
going to use Pharaoh Shot throughout this next area because it can kill these uh, mono rotors with uh, one charge shot. Makes quick work of them. The next area is the area that I was talking about where you flip a switch and it creates earth. Which is, like I said, kind of weird, but at the same time, kind of an interesting little stage element. The flash stopper is uh, pretty good for this area. Keeps the boulders from falling out of the chutes. And also freezes the little helicopter guys. We're not too much further from Drill Man. This is the final stretch of his stage. And here we go. Drill Man is weak to the dive missile, which we don't have, but uh, we'll just use Pharaoh Shot. Does really good. I always really enjoyed fighting Drill Man. He can only really do two things. He can dig underground, in which he'll come up later and try to hit you from underneath. And a weapons only run, I'd recommend sliding back and forth to get the Pharaoh Shot uneven with Mega Man. That way if Drill Man comes up from behind him, there's the chance that he can uh, run right into the Pharaoh Shot Blast. Other than that, he can run around and shoot drill bombs everywhere. So long as you know how to time your jumps over the drill bombs, though, that's not hard at all. Just a couple more hits and Drill Man will be down and out. There we go. For defeating Drill Man, you get the Drill Bomb weapon. The Drill Bomb is a pretty powerful remote-operated explosive. Whenever you shoot it, if you press the shot button again, it will remote detonate the bomb. So that's pretty good. And it's also pretty powerful. It doesn't use up much energy, just to have one bar of energy per shot. Overall, it's a really good weapon and one of my favorites to use here in Mega Man 4. You also get Rush and Jet for beating Drill Man, but as usual, we won't be using him unless it's forced. We only have one more Robot Master left, which is Dive Man. Dive Man's a pretty cool Robot Master. I always like his stage a lot and his music. I never really understood what the red stuff is inside of these glass containers here and there. Some people have said that it's sand, but I don't think that it looks at all like sand. Whatever it is, though, I guess it really doesn't matter, but, uh, yeah. Just use Skull Barrier throughout the first part of the stage. You'll want to save some of that for Dive Man because that's his weakness. We'll use Dust Crusher for a little while. Give it some screen time. We're getting ready to come up to the first mini-boss of this stage. There are two whale mini-bosses, called Moby. We'll go ahead and use the Ring Boomerang to fight off the whale mini-boss. There we go. Just stand just to the lower left of him, and jump up to small hops and hit him with the Ring Boomerang. And uh, coming up here pretty shortly will be a visit from Eddie. We'll see what we get from him. Just right up that ladder and we'll meet up with him. Alright, let's see what he got. He has a 1-up. Not bad. We'll use a Drill Bomb up here, give it some screen time. It can kill the Jump Bigs in two hits, so that's pretty good. And we're now getting back into the water. The water's going to start going up and down now. We'll also see uh, Stingray enemies. Stingray enemies always like set themselves up for death. Like, they can be swimming along, and then they decide to swim right into your, uh, level of firing. So you can just pretty much stand there and keep shooting, and they'll swim right into it. We got our second whale mini-boss here now. Just do the same thing as you did before. Stand to the lower left of him, do small hops, and shoot him. And we don't have very much left of this stage now. We'll be seeing some uh, sea mines throughout here. We can't destroy them or anything. Just wait for them to blow up and then pass by. Really not hard at all. Alright, just wait for the right timing. Then we'll slide underneath the sea mine. And we are now on the final stretch of the stage. Coming right up ahead is Dive Man. The Drill Bomb is really good for destroying uh, the Stingray type enemies. Dive Man is weak to Skull Barrier, but you can also fight him with the Dust Crusher if you want to fight him from a distance. It does some uh, pretty okay damage. For defeating Dive Man, you get the Dive Missile, which is a homing torpedo. For some weird reason, it likes to track the rear ends of enemies, though. It doesn't use up much energy. It only uses up one uh, bar of energy per shot. And it can kill some uh, enemies that would take three or so hits with the Mega Buster in one hit. So it's not too bad of a weapon. Just kind of weird how it likes to track the enemies down. It's pretty fast moving, too. 
Overall, I do think the dive missile is a pretty good weapon, but like I said, it's just kind of weird how it likes to track the enemies down, that's all. I like the color that it turns Mega Man, the whole blue and white color scheme. I think that that looks pretty cool myself. And well, that is it for part one.